Hi Tacoma, welcome back to your second grade TV classroom. Today is Monday, November 16th, and I'm Mrs. Oslin. As always, let's take a moment and check in with how you're feeling. Think about what zone you're in. We've been thinking about using an I message to help us express how we're feeling to someone else. We also have been thinking about using really rich descriptive language when we talk about what we're feeling. Instead of just saying sad or mad or happy, can you get more specific? Is there a better word to describe what you're thinking? Use this feelings tree to help you. Think about your I message and how strongly you're feeling your emotion. I'm gonna practice sharing my iMessage with Gus. Gus, I'm feeling thankful because my mom came and visited for the first time in almost a year and I hadn't seen her. So I am just thankful that I got to safely spend some time with her. Now, go ahead and take a moment to share your iMessage with your learning buddy, someone in the room with you or with me on the screen. You'll remember that we've been talking about using iMessages to express our feelings so that other people know how we're feeling. And it's really important for us to stop and think about how strongly we're feeling an emotion and recognizing when we're feeling it at a four or a five, which means we won't be able to focus, but also we might say or do something that could hurt ourselves or someone else. And when we get to that point, we need to use our stop and stay cool steps. You'll remember our stop and stay cool steps are first, you say, I feel like I'm losing control. Second, you stop. Then you give yourself a chili hug, you practice your breathing, and then hopefully you're cool and ready for school so that you can share your I message. When you do have a conflict with someone, a problem which is totally normal and natural, we've been practicing using the peace path to get to a nonviolent solution so that both people feel good about the situation and both people get some of what they want. You'll remember step one on the peace path is to tell the problem. This is when you share your I message with whoever it is that you're having a conflict with. But you also need to be ready to listen to the other person and say back what their I message is. Then you brainstorm solutions. You think about possible win-win solutions to a conflict. We talked about sharing, taking turns, getting help, apologizing, or even walking away. Then you decide together which solution you're going to try, and then you solve your problem. Today, I wanna to teach you about the importance of including others. We learned last week in the book Chester's Way all about the good qualities of a good friend. We talked about what do we like about our friends and you wrote about what do you think makes you a good friend. So we learned all about Chester and Wilson and how they were like two peas in a pod which is what their parents said about them. But then you'll remember a new character moved into the neighborhood and we left not knowing how that was gonna impact their relationship. So today I want you thinking about why it's important to include others and continue thinking about what it is about you that makes you a good friend as we read Chester's Way by Kevin Henkes. Chester had his own way of doing things. Hello, my name is Chester. I like croquet and peanut butter and making my bed. He always cut his sandwiches diagonally. He always got out of bed on the same side. And he never left the house without double knotting his shoes. Chester always had the same thing for breakfast, toast with jam and peanut butter. And he always carried a miniature first aid kit in his pocket, in his back pocket, just in case. You definitely have a mind of your own, Chester, said Chester's mother. That's one way to put it, said Chester's father. Chester's best friend, Wilson, was exactly the same way. That's why they were best friends. Chester wouldn't play baseball unless Wilson played, and they never swung at the, at the first pitch or slid head first. Wilson wouldn't ride his bike unless Chester wanted to, and they always used hand signals. If Chester was hungry, Wilson was too, but they rarely ate between meals. 
Some days I can't tell those two apart, said Wilson's mother. Me either, said Wilson's father. Chester and Wilson, Wilson and Chester, that's the way it was. They loved to go on picnics. Once when Wilson accidentally swallowed, swallowed a watermelon seed and cried because he was afraid that a wa watermelon would grow inside him, Chester swallowed one too. Don't worry, said Chester. Now if you grow a watermelon plant, I'll grow one too. Chester duplicated his Christmas list every year and gave a copy to Wilson because they always wanted the same things anyway. For Halloween, they always dressed as things that went together. Salt and pepper shakers, two mittens on a string, ham and eggs. They really are two peas in a pod, said Chester's mother. Looks like it, said Chester's father. So we talked about how Chester and Wilson seem to like the same things and that's what makes them friends. In spring, Chester and Wilson shared the same umbrella. In winter, they never threw snowballs at each other. In fall, they raked leaves together, and in summer, they remembered each other, reminded each other to wear sunscreen so they wouldn't burn. So because they're friends, they take care of each other. So caring was a quality of a good friend. Chester and Wilson, Wilson and Chester, that's the way it was. And then Lily moved into the neighborhood. Lily had her own way of doing things. I'm Lily, I am the queen, I like everything. Now let's read to find out what happens with Chester and Wilson now that Lily, who's a little different than them, moves into the neighborhood. She wore band-aids all over her arms and legs to look brave. She talked backwards to herself sometimes so no one would know what she was saying. Lily am I. And she never left the house without one of her nifty disguises. Lily waved at all the cars that passed by, even if she didn't know who was in them. And she always carried a loaded squirt gun in her back pocket, just in case. She definitely has a mind of her own, said Chester. That's one way to put it. Lily does seem to be different than Chester and Wilson. She talks to herself backwards. She waves at cars, even if she doesn't know who's in the, in the car. She always has a water gun. Hmm. When Lily asked Chester and Wilson to play, they said they were busy. When she called them up on the phone, they disguised their voices and said they weren't home. If Lily was walking on the other side of the street, Chester and Wilson crossed to the other side. She's something else, said Chester. Looks like it, said Wilson. Now, I'm wondering, why do you think that Chester and Wilson are saying that they're busy or they cross to the other side of the street when Lily comes? Take some think time. Turn and tell your learning buddy what you're thinking. Gus, I think Chester and Wilson don't wanna play with Lily because she's different than them. Now, how do you think it makes Lily feel when Chester and Wilson, um, when she calls them, they disguise their voices and say they weren't home? How do you think that makes Lily feel? Take some think time. Turn and tell your learning buddy what you're thinking. Gus, I think that would make Lily feel left out. You might have said something similar. You might have said that it makes her feel sad or lonely or hurt. Let's look at our feelings tree. On the sad branch, I added left out, but we could also add lonely. We could also add, or it already says sad, but left out is far more descriptive than just sad. It even gives a little idea of why she's feeling that way. They're leaving her out. They're not including her. Now I want to introduce a new rule or a new idea called no one gets left out. And it's important for us as a community to be thinking about making sure that we're including everyone, making sure everyone's voice is heard and everyone gets to contribute to the conversation Everyone gets to play. No one gets left out. It's part of being a caring community in our classroom and in the community outside our classroom. 
So as we read, I want to challenge you to think about how you can include the no one gets left out rule in your life and why it's important. One day, while Chester and Wilson were practicing their hand signals, some older boys rode by, popping wheelies. They circled Chester and Wilson and yelled personal remarks. Chester and Wilson didn't know what to do. Just when they were about to give up hope, a fierce-looking cat with horrible fangs jumped out of the bushes and frightened the older boys away. What has happened? Take some think time. It's Lily. Lily came and frightened the older boys away. Why do you think Lily would do that? Take some think time. Turn and tell your learning buddy what you're thinking. Gus, I think that Lily frightened the older kids away to protect Chester and Wilson because she's being caring and she's taking care of her friends and supporting them. And that's a quality of a good friend. You might have said something similar. You might have also said that she is helping them or keeping them safe. Those are all qualities of a good friend. And I wonder how Chester and Wilson are going to respond. Are you who I think you are? Chester asked the cat. Of course, the cat replied. Thank you, Lily, said Chester. You're welcome, Chester, said Lily. Thank you, Lily, said Wilson. You're welcome, Wilson, said Lily. I'm glad you are wearing a disguise, said Chester. And I'm glad you had your squirt gun, said Wilson. I always do, said Lily, just in case. Afterward, Chester invited Lily over for lunch. You have a muscle mouse cup, said Lily. Of course, said Chester. I do too, said Lily. Same here, said Wilson. Chester and Wilson cut their sandwiches diagonally. Lily asked Chester's mother if she had a cookie cutters and she made stars and flowers and bells. That's neat, said Chester. Wow, said Wilson. That night, Lily invited Chester and Wilson to sleep over. You have a nightlight, said Chester. Of course, said Lily. I do too, said Chester. Same here, said Wilson. Chester and Wilson wanted toast with jam and peanut butter for breakfast the next morning. Boring, said Lily. Try this in instead. This is good, said Chester. Wow, said Wilson. After that, when Lily asked Chester and Wilson to play, they said yes. When she called them on the phone, they had pleasant conversations. And if Lily was walking on one side of the street, Chester and Wilson waved and ran to catch up with her. Chester and Wilson taught Lily hand signals, and she taught them how to pop wheelies. Lily taught Chester and Wilson how to talk backwards, and they taught her how to double knot her shoes. Now, I'm noticing that Chester and Wilson are learning a different perspective from their friend Lily that they never would have learned if they had continued leaving her out. That's why it's so important for us to include everyone because everyone has a perspective that we can learn and benefit from. Some days I can't tell those three apart, said Lily's mother. Me either, said Lily's father. Chester and Wilson and Lily, Lily and Wilson and Chester. That's the way it was. For Halloween, they dressed as the three blind mice. For Christmas, Lily gave Chester and Wilson nifty disguises, and they gave her a box of multicolored shoelaces, extra long for double knotting. They loved to go on picnics. When Chester and Wilson told Lily about that, how they had each swallowed a watermelon seed once, Lily swallowed three of them. I'll grow a watermelon plant for each of us, she said. In spring, Chester and Wilson and Lily shared the same umbrella. In winter, they never threw snowballs at each other. In fall, they reeked leaves together, and in summer, they reminded each other to wear sunscreen so they wouldn't burn. Chester and Wilson and Lily, Lily and Wilson and Chester, that's the way it was. Now, stop and think about how their relationship has changed because they used the no one gets left out rule. Take some think time. Turn and tell your learning buddy what you're thinking. 
Gus, they have a new friend now that they would never have had and they wouldn't have had these fun times with Lily if they had continued to leave her out. And she also brings a pretty fun perspective where now they get to wear disguises and they learned a fun new way to cut their sandwiches. Let's keep reading. And then Victor moved into the neighborhood. What do you think is going to happen? Do you think that Lily and Wilson and Chester are going to use the no one gets left out rule and include Wilson, uh, Victor? I sure hope so. And that's my challenge to you friends is to use the no one gets left out rule to help you include everyone. Because when you include other people, you learn from them and they, they bring something to your friendship and your friendships grow stronger. When you go off to your independent reading today, you're going to continue to use your troublemaker words and your tackle a word chart to help you read and write words that are giving you trouble. You can also practice reading your snap words book and use your snap words in your writing. Today, I want you to write about how using the no one gets left out rule can help you and your friendships. And I want you to send that into your teacher. You could also send it to, uh, to us here at our TV classroom, either through our email or in the mail. And at the end of the lesson, Mr. Kevin will put up our address and you can drop it in the mail. Also, Mrs. Wally and I know some of you who are out there watching and we're gonna start sending you letters. So be watching the mail for letters from us and it will have an address and en an envelope in it that already has our address and a stamp on it. So you can just write us a letter and send it right back to us in the mail. Now it's your five minute break time. You need to take care of your needs, but also gather the materials that you will need for math. You'll need your whiteboard and marker, your learning buddy, and your counters. So go gather those materials and then come back here ready to learn. Thank you so much for being with me today, second graders. I hope you have a great day and I look forward to seeing you tomorrow. Bye.
Hi, second graders. Happy Monday. It's Make Up Monday, and what's kind of cool is we've been practicing this Make Up Monday of taking the sum and breaking it apart to make equations. And that's what we're going to work on today in our normal lesson, too. So, what are some ways that you can make 58? Go ahead, write them down on your whiteboard. I'm going to write some of the ways I'm thinking of down, and then let's compare. Are you ready? I'm going to sing my little tune. Here we go. Mm -hmm. I have three ways. Do you have at least one? Okay, I'm going to show you mine. Are you ready? I have 50 plus 8. Then I drew 5, 10, and 8 ones. And then I did 47 plus 11. Does that match any of your ways? Would you have some different ones? Awesome thinking, second graders. Okay, let's get into our math for today. I'm gonna move my picture here into the corner. Okay, today we are learning to break apart a sum or total to find two add-ends that make the problem true. So let's talk about an addition equation really quick. I'm going to put something here. Okay, when we have an addition equation, we have an addend or a part plus an addend, the other part, is the same as the sum or a total. Now, there can be more than one, two addends. There can be seven addends if you want. There's no limit on how many addends you can have but there's only one sum or total. Think about part, part, whole, add in, add in, sum. Okay? All right, so find three different pairs of numbers. So pair, you know what the word pair means? It means two. So we're gonna have two add-ins that each have a sum of 12. Complete each equation. Okay, are you ready? I'm gonna make my think time music. I'm gonna write three down that I can think of here on my board, and it's your turn to do it on your board, and then we'll compare. Are you ready? Here we go. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There are lots of ways to do this. There's lots of ways to make 12. These are the ones I chose, 10 plus two. That was the first one that came to mind because I can break it into tens and ones. Six plus six, a double, and eight. Not eight plus two, Mrs. Wally. Eight plus four. My brain, I tell you, I love your brain. Eight plus four equals 12. Did you get the same ones or did you choose different ones? Great, awesome thinking. So that's what we're gonna do today. We're gonna be taking a total or a sum and we're gonna be finding ways to make that sum. Are you ready? Elizabeth has 35 toy cars. A lot of toy cars. How can she put her toy cars on the top and bottom shelves of her bookcase? Show three ways. So what I want you to do is, let me show you. And there's just a top and a bottom, so there's only going to be two ways, two add-ins. You're going to do this, 35 equals, 35 equals, 35 equals, okay? And then I want you to write the ways to make 35 that you can think of. Ready? Go. Yeah. Mm-hmm. 
for the first one. Do expanded form. I do the tens and the ones. Because that's the easiest one to figure out because it's right there in front of me. So 30 plus five. Then I said, well, I know that 15 plus 15 is 30. So I'll just add five more to one of the add-ins, which is 20. So 15 plus 20 is 35. And then I said, I know the rule of one more. It's just the next number. So I'm going to do 34 plus one. Which ones did you do? Awesome. I bet a lot of you had different ones than me. You know what I would love to see? I would love it if you would send in the ways you made 35 to me here at the TV classroom. You can either email it to me or send it in the mail. I would love it. I would love to see the ways you made 35. Who knows? Maybe I'll send you back a little something special in the mail. It could happen. Okay, did we show three ways? We did. I think that. This bottom one, 34 plus one, I want you to imagine a shelf with 34 cars on one shelf and then just one car on the bottom shelf. Wouldn't that look funny? Oh, I think that would be really silly looking. But it didn't say they had to be efficient ways or ways that were even. It just said it had to be two different ways or three different ways, right? Yeah. So let's see. What are the, th look back, what are the three ways that Elizabeth can put her toy cars on the top and bottom shelves of the bookcase? So let's talk about that. Woo. Well, on this one, the top would be 30 and the bottom would be five. Now, if I flipped my add-ins, the top would be five and the bottom would be 30, right? But I'm going to read from left to right. And so the top is going to be my first add-in, the bottom is going to be my Second add-in, so 15 on top, 20 on bottom. 34 on top, one on bottom. I think that this one would be the silliest looking one, don't you? I agree. All right, you can use different strategies to solve addition and subtraction problems. We know that, we've been working on that a lot in second grade. Think about this problem. Gary has 50 marbles. What are some different ways he can put them all in two bags? Complete the equations to show the three different ways. Now, to do this one, we are going to make a bar model. No, wrong word, Mrs. Wally. We're going to do a number bond. Do you remember how to make a number bond? You haven't done those in a while in second grade. So I want you to make a giant number bond like this on your whiteboard. What is our whole? Yeah, 50. There are 50 marbles, right? I want you to think about splitting those marbles into two bags. What are going to be your two parts or your two add-ins? Okay. Maybe you could do 30. And 20 is away, okay? So here is my number bond, 30 and 20. We're gonna use this number bond to fill out the first one. What was my first addend? My first addend was 30. So first bag's gonna have 30, second bag's gonna have 20. Now, it wants different ways, right? It said, what are some different ways you can put them in? So I'm going to erase my 20 and erase my 30. Go ahead and erase. Let's do another way. What's another way we can make 50? Yeah, it's like quarters, right? 25 and 25. Each bag would have 25. Now, how would I write that in the subtraction equation? 
50 minus 25 equals 25. Okay, let's do another one. Erase the 25s. All right, here we go. Hmm, what's another way to make 50? Yeah, 40 and 10. Fifty equals forty plus ten. Go ahead and write that equation. Fifty equals forty plus. And thank you for being so patient with my mouse writing. It's very difficult to do. But I'm getting better at it. Right. Did we show different ways you can put them in two bags and complete the equations to show the three different ways? Yes, we did. Are there other ways Gary could put the marbles into the two bags? Never think time. We did these three ways. Are there any other ways? Try to tell your learning buddy. What are some of the ways you're thinking? There are so many ways. I want you to think about we have 50 in this hand and zero in this hand. We put one over. 49 and one. Another one. 48 and two. Another one. 47 and three, we can go all the way until we get 50 over here. There are tons of ways to make 50 in two bags, isn't there? Yeah, don't worry, we're not gonna list all of them out. So I'm gonna talk about this part of your assignment right here, it's called strategy, okay? And down here, they've done a number line. So strategy, that's the thing you choose to do to solve the problem. We have learned lots of strategies. For a minute, I want you to think about some of the strategies we have learned as second graders this year to solve math problems. What are some of the things we have done? Hmm. What are some of the strategies we've done this year? Yeah, we've drawn pictures, right? We've had like two parts, Right? We've made models with a picture. What else have we done? We've built with tools. Okay? What's another thing we've done? Yeah. We've done bar models, right? Have we done bar models this year? Yep. What's another strategy we've used to solve math problems? Oh, the open number line. Yeah, that's a good one. Okay, what's another one we've done? Hopping back on the number line. Yep, that's another good one. Using number bonds. Yes, we've done that. What else have we done for strategies? Hmm. Yeah, we've just done the equations. We've done or we've been thinking about the parts in our hands and tossing them over to the sides. Yeah. We've used base 10 blocks. Yes. Base 10 blocks are an excellent strategy for helping you solve problems. Yeah, there's lots of things. What you're going to do for this assignment is you're going to draw pictures of examples of all different strategies, and you're gonna do six strategies you can use to solve problems. Draw pictures, number lines, number bonds, R models, base 10 blocks. Um, the list goes on and on, using the part, part, whole, right? Okay, and you're gonna do number two. It says Clark solves blank minus 23 equals 19 by counting up on a number line. Did he use his strategy correctly? So look at what he did and see if that's correct. He went from 20 to 23 and said it was three. Is that three? He went from 19 to 20 and said it was one. Is it one? Did he use the strategy correctly? We practiced it a lot. So you're analyzing and seeing if he did it correctly. Then you're gonna solve the problem, just, just like the car problem we just did, where this person has 42 dolls and they're gonna put the dolls on the top and bottom shelves. And you're gonna show three ways they can do that. Okay, all right. This was a short math lesson today. Sometimes they're a little bit shorter and that's okay. It means you have a little extra time to do your math workbook pages and to play outside. It is so important to play outside as a, as a child. It's where you learn most, okay? All right, so 
or learning check. Did we break apart a sum or total to find two add-ins that make the problem true? Yep. Did we model what we were thinking? Yep. Did we choose two add-ins that made the sum? Yep. How did we model it? Yeah, in a number bond. And did we check our work by putting add-ins together? Yep. So we did it. Kiss your brain, second graders. Nice job. So now is our time for our affirmation. All right. This is one that we do every week because it is so important. I want you to remember that you matter. Sometimes when things are busy and lots of stuff's going on, it sometimes feels like maybe you don't matter, but you do. And so it's important to remind ourselves that even when things are feeling really hard, that we do matter. So I'm gonna go first and then it's gonna be your turn. I matter. Your turn. Excellent job, second graders. You did a wonderful job today. And I hope that you have a great Monday. And we will see you tomorrow. Bye. Hey kids, we want to see your work. Just send your pictures and your stories to TV Classroom, 601 South 8th Street, Tacoma, Washington, 98405.